Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore video game content that goes unused, altered, and unseen. Alright, time for another Sonic game on the show. Well, kinda. Knuckles Chaotix is very much a 2D Sonic game, you just don't play as Sonic. In his stead, this Sega 32X game showcases a crew of what I think are some of the coolest characters in the series. And with all of that said, let's dive into this Red Enchilada's only titular game and find some Lost Bits. Alright, so I have no idea how much fan interest there is for this game, so in this video we'll just be covering the final release of the game. But if you're interested in me making a video on some prototypes of the game and such, seems like there's enough cool stuff there for a standalone episode, be sure to let me and the YouTube algorithm know with a comment and like down below. Anyways, on that note, let's first kick things off with the stuff found dealing with the game's sound test, which is really cool, might I add. It shows all of the notes that are being played on each track, just really cool stuff. First up is an otherwise unused sound that can be heard here listed at 6B. Now this majestic sound is a reworked version of a sound that was once used in one of the game's pre-release builds on the Sega screen when booting it up. Interestingly, although it was reworked, presumably with the same intended use, neither version does go used in the final release. Here's a quick comparison of the two, which one do you think is better? Next, this volume meter on the bottom right here may be cool and all, but there's a weird secret method to have it replaced. Similar to accessing the game's debug mode, which we'll of course come back to later, this color test screen needs to be edited. Now this one's pretty obscure. By setting the color bars to look exactly like this, the volume bars on the sound test screen will now be replaced by none other than Amy Rose, who will groove and offer compliments to the music, calling it cool, sweet, and most importantly, catchy. A really obscure but rather cool little easter egg that I'm sure very few people saw around the time this game released. I mean, very few people got the Sega 32X, so a small percentage of a small percentage basically. Lastly for the sound test, not technically unused or anything, but oddly, despite the North American and European regional manuals for the game stating that the 6-button Genesis or Mega Drive controllers don't do anything special on the screen, in fact explicitly stating that they aren't used, it turns out they actually are. Holding Y and pressing either right or left lets you speed up or slow down the sounds, respectively. <laughs> while pressing X toggles between a mono or stereo sound output option. The Japanese manual for the game mentions these, so it's really strange that Sega of America and Europe were trying to hide the truth from us. Makes you wonder what else they could possibly be hiding. Anyways, moving on, next up are the game's unused graphics, and boy oh boy does this game have a lot of unused sprites. First up are several text graphics featuring numerous words from player, to level, to a colon with an X. It's interesting to note that unlike most games where a full font set is used when calling graphics for text, this game stores text as individual words like this. Also here it should be noted that the intended color palette for this text is currently unknown, so the colors here are speculative. Additionally, just based on some words and phrases here like, it's a new record, and start the clock, it's thought that these text graphics, or at least some of them, might have been intended for a scrapped time attack mode that was actually found included in earlier prototype versions of the game. Also thought to be related to this scrapped time attack mode is this checkered finish line style banner sprite. Now next up are two graphics for what's believed to be a scrapped underwater segment in the game, probably in Marina Madness. We got this little bubble, perhaps for a character exhaling underwater, as well as a set of sprites for this splashing animation for something falling in or popping out of some water. Next are these rotating balls in a red and yellow variety. They look similar to the balls seen in the Sonic 3 bonus stages, and having a star on them, it's also thought they were meant to be a bumper of some sort. You might also recognize these as they were actually reused several years later as part of these guys in Sonic Mania's Studiopolis Zone. Then moving on, we have this strange, unusual capsule device thing with a currently unknown purpose, but some believe it could be a New Age style of the capsule used to capture animals in previous Sonic games, or it also kinda looks similar to the combi catcher. There's this flying carpet that's a remnant from an older prototype build, these graphics of what look to be spikes or claws or something, 
this coil thing, thought to be from the speed slider stage, this spinning star, a rotating tube machine thing, and some switches thought to be associated with it, this light post thing that's believed to have been associated with the game's title screen, as well as these animations of a needle nose enemy that, based on the 3D look, is thought to have been meant for either the intro cutscene or perhaps the bonus stage. Now, I'm gonna take a wild guess here, but I assume these might have been scrapped because of this last exploding animation here. It's pretty gruesome. Then next, all associated with the Amazing Arena stage, we got these horizontal tube endings, which go unused since in the game, all tubes end vertically in the stage. There's this set of blocks featuring the sun and moon, which gives me vibes from that one stage in Wario Land 3. Some unused hazardous platforms. Shocking, I know. And then we got some background stuff, like these clouds, as well as these stars. Both thought to be visible through the windows, with the latter either maybe being mixed in with the clouds during nighttime, or perhaps at some higher elevation. Next, this game also has some placeholder graphics that go unused, including this very basic looking ramp that's believed to have been once intended to be used to implement loop segments in the speed slider stage during development, which if you've played the stage, you know the loops never came to be. Then we also got this test graphic that literally just says, test, gotta love those. And finally, this rather creepy blood-stained skull. The intention of this graphic is currently unknown, and the Japanese text in the bottom left here doesn't make it any less cryptic, as apparently it translates to, to fly, to jump. Pretty creepy. Not surprising why this isn't used, and wait a second, whose skull was this? Sega, I need some answers here. Next up is this graphic that reads Casablanca Projects, and this graphic is apparently loaded in during the staff roll credits in the prototype builds, but not in the final release. A few quick Google searches didn't yield any noteworthy results, so honestly I have no idea what Casablanca Projects means in regards to this game or Sega, but if any of you out there might know, be sure to let us know down in the comments. Anyways, moving on, next is what appears to be a scrapped monitor power-up featuring an hourglass, as well as wide hourglass. The exact effect of these power-ups isn't known for sure, but I'd be willing to bet that they might have had some effect on the time in the cut time attack mode. Either that, or something similar to the time stop power-up seen in Sonic Chaos, or the clock power-up that was also scrapped in Sonic CD. Even when loaded into the game, these monitors have no effect, but it's interesting to note that the thinner version of these hourglass monitors was actually used as a placeholder graphic for the combi catcher in one of the prototype builds, which also likes to crash a lot. Okay, now some unused enemies, or at least some sprites for them. First up is this guy, known as Shifter. Then we got this badnik that would extend its neck, I guess, to try and chomp down on the player or something. Based on their coloring, they are believed to have been once intended to be seen in the Amazing Arena Zone. Then next are these rotated sprites of the Pop Tank badnik, which going used since in the final game, they are only seen on flat, horizontal surfaces. And finally, there's a set of graphics for this strange object. It's unknown what exactly this is currently, but it kinda looks like some sort of badnik to me, so yeah, I'll just group it in here. Now, unused enemies are cool and all, but what about their boss? Luckily for us, there's also some Dr. Robotnik stuff for us to discuss here as well. First up are some unused sprites of the round fella, looking like he can't decide which hand to use to open a jar of pickles. Now, although some similar sprites are used in the game's bad ending, these, as well as this background, do go unused. Due to their similarity, it's thought that perhaps this might have been part of a scrapped version of the good ending. Then secondly is this texture set, which when put together has the dock overlooking this capsule in a very foreboding way. This was apparently meant to be used as part of the intro cutscene, and it's a shame it was scrapped. I think this looks awesome. This game also has a few unused graphics for the Titan Metal Sonic boss. We got this weird purple gas looking effect, several exploding and fire effects, including some from a spinning thing that would apparently have been part of a scrapped attack phase in which this thing would rotate on his wrist as he rotated his hand. And then finally, there's this creepy sprite of his head. Now what makes this unused sprite especially unique is that although most sprites in this game are rendered using the Sega 32X, this sprite is actually rendered using the Sega Genesis hardware. Honestly, one of the creepiest looking bosses in a game deemed okay for kids. And nope, the unused graphics don't end there. With all those enemies and objects and such out of the way, now onto the game's playable characters. 
First up are some scrapped Dizzy animations for each of the main fellas. In a prototype version of this game, similar Dizzy animations were used when the player would take several consecutive hits from spikes, so it's speculated that these might have had the same intention here. Then similarly, there are also unused frames for the throwing animation for Knuckles, Mighty, Charmy, Vector, and Heavy. For reference here, the green bar indicates which frames are used in the game, and the red one for the ones that aren't. Then, on a more individual level, we got an unused wall jump frame and a sort of diving move for Mighty, extra pulling frames and a dash starting animation for Charmy, a jumping frame for Bomb, holding and throwing frames, as well as a horizontal spin move for Espio when walking on walls, both of which aren't possible in the game. Then for Vector, there's this sprite thought to be from his climbing animation, these frames believed to be ending frames for his air dash, these thought to be for Vector launching onto and falling off walls, sprites for a front-facing roll animation, and then finally for ya boy Nux, there's this unused sprite of him transitioning to a glide, this extra frame for his ledge grab animation, and lastly, this cool yet weird but also creepy graphic of Knuckles in an irregular spin dash form. Here we can actually see his face in the spin dash, and yeah, I just don't know how to feel about this one. Now before moving on to the last couple of unused sprites, it's important to note that it's believed that at one point, Knuckles Chaotix was actually planned to be another Sonic game featuring the main Blue Hedgehog himself and various bits of evidence point to this, including not just a prototype build still featuring Sonic and Tails known as Sonic Crackers, but also several Knuckles Chaotix sprites which appear to be just recolors of sprites of Sonic from other games. For example, the jumping animations for both Knuckles and Mighty appear to be pretty much just recolors of Sonic Jump seen in the bonus stages in Sonic CD, and several other sprites of Mighty appear to be very similar to Sonic as seen in the prototype build. I'll dive deeper into this if I do ever cover the pre-release stuff for this game, but with that context set, there are actually a few sprites of both Sonic and Tails that do remain left over in this game. First is this animation of Tails piloting the tornado, then there's also Super Sonic flying with both hands forward, as well as him putting one hand behind himself, and then there's also these shines, believed to have been associated with Super Sonic as well. Now, based on the fact that these sprites are found closely to those used in the game's good ending, it's believed that these sprites aren't from the earlier prototypes, but rather from a scrapped good ending cutscene where I guess the two would fly by the screen. Just like the text from earlier in this video, it should also be noted that the exact color palette of Super Sonic here isn't 100% known, and these shown here are just speculative. But what's even more strange is that a sprite from this animation actually appeared on Sonic Team's website back in 1996, so I guess the sprite did get some use after all. And now, last up for this video, I teased it a bit earlier, but now let's finally get to talking about this game's debug mode. It just feels like it wouldn't be a 2D Sonic Lost Bits video without one, doesn't it? Well, once again, by toying around with the game's color test, by setting the colors just like so, the debug mode can be accessed. Can I just say, I really appreciate the developers of classic Sonic games for hiding secrets like this in weird areas like the sound and color test screens. Anyways, once enabled, a stage select option will be seen on the title screen. Here you can select the level of course, the time of day, as well as the character and second buddy. A few interesting things to note here are that A, despite Knuckles being the titular character, Mighty is the first name in the list of characters, again adding fuel to the theory that Mighty had just replaced Sonic during development, and B, there's this scrapped character whose name is just a bunch of stars, which for simplicity, let's just call him Ten Star. Now when loaded as the second character player, strangely enough, Ten Star appears as Knuckles, but he uses Mighty's color palette instead. Now, Tenstar is actually a remnant of Tails from the old Sonic Crackers prototype. Although more similarities to Tails controls were seen in other pre-release builds, in the final here, unfortunately not much remains as Tenstar pretty much just plays like Knuckles. Well, apparently, as you guys have been seeing, pretty much every stage I tried to load him into would result in an immediate crash upon touching the ground. Then, the second main attraction for this game's debug mode is, of course, the free movement camera we've seen time and time again in 2D Sonic games here on Lost Bits. As expected, with the debug mode enabled and after pausing the game, you can move around the camera basically wherever you want, and the values here indicate the X and Y coordinates, as well as the zone, act, and current time of day in the game. 
Unfortunately, what this game's debug mode lacks, compared to those we've seen before, is the ability to place down items wherever you'd like. This makes this debug mode quite a bit less fun to play around with, as it lacks the customizability placing items, objects, and enemies offers. But nonetheless, it's always still really handy to be able to fly around wherever you want to quickly, or to zoom through stages, or even explore some areas that you aren't normally supposed to. Overall, still very fun to just slap some relaxing music with, and vibe around for a while. Like I said, I have no idea how much interest there is in this game, so if you'd like to see me cover all of the pre-release stuff, please be sure to let me know. While you're here, check out some of my other Sonic Lost Bits videos if you haven't already, and consider subscribing to stay up to date while also helping me with YouTube's algorithm. But as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today, and I will see you in a bit.